start off by saying my name is Joette Calabrese. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a homeopath and educator, and I love teaching homeopathy because it is my passion, as it is apparently yours as well. Um, but for those who do know me, welcome, friends. It's wonderful to see you all. So I was trying to fix my hair tonight, and I was just complaining because I am losing hair like crazy. This was all so thick, and I was losing hair a couple years ago, and then I, um, I, I used homeopathy to change it, and it worked beautifully. And then I just kept up with horsetail, which is equisetum. And I'm here in New York State for Thanksgiving and Christmas and part of January to spend some time with um, our family, and I didn't bring this with us. So this is it, I wanna show you this. I'm not talking about this tonight, but it's equisetum, otherwise known as horsetail. Let's go this way, I have to do the opposite. Otherwise known as horsetail. And um, I haven't been taking it for the last, I don't know, we've been here maybe three and a half weeks. And so I've not been taking it, and boy, I can really tell the difference. And on a black blouse, I can see it everywhere, and it's, I can feel that my hair's thinner because there's, I'm having a great deal of loss. So I want to point out to you that what I do is I put it in here. I put five drops of my equisetum into my water, and that's what I drink throughout the day. Or I put it in my coffee or tea, whatever I'm drinking. So I wanted to pass that along to you all. I know I've talked about it before, but you ought to know about it. Equisetum or horsetail. And I like Herb Farm. And I buy it sometimes directly from them. Sometimes I buy it from um, local stores. And since we don't go out so much anymore, uh, then instead I'm buying it on um, online. So just a little extra tip that you hadn't expected to hear about tonight. Uh, one or two friends use it. Yes, and I use it too. Yeah, it's great stuff. And because it's loaded with silica, it's great for urinary tract issues. It's great for skin in general. It's uh, great for girding during difficult times, emotionally, et cetera. It's really a great herb, uh, a botanical, not homeopathic, but a botanical. And I love botanicals. I use them a lot. All right. So let's talk tonight about this medicine, which is great for, as I said, throat infections and tonsillitis, et cetera. And the medicine is Mercurius cyanatus. I'm going to spell it M E R C U R I U S. Second word is cyanatus, S Y A N A T U S. And in case you don't know, this is cyanide of mercury. Yes, mercurius sin, C Y N, it's often called. Um, and it is, when it's needed, it is a very sweeping, very in depth medicine. It's a medicine that is used for throat issues, tonsil stones, enlarged tonsils. I'm reading out of my Materia Medica for those of you who are not familiar with it. This is my Materia Medica. And you can get that if you'd like on my website. You can contact my office should you be interested. And so we're in the M's and we're in Mercurius cyanatus um, or uh, cyanide of mercury or Mercurius Sin, C-Y-N is what we often call it. I'm going to read from my book and also some other ideas that I have had um, through the years. It's great for acute throat infections. Um, it's good for pneumonia. It's not my first choice for pneumonia. Oh, you see what's happening with my hair? This is really a strange thing going on back here. It's really, see, this is because I should have been taking that horsetail all along. <laughs> anyway, um, it is, um, that's the problem with, with looking at yourself. I mean, I feel like I'm staring in the mirror and it's really, it's really uh, distracting. Okay, I'm gonna focus now. So it's great for throat infections, for tonsil stones, for, so acute infections, as well as tonsil stones are usually chronic condition, a chronic condition. Um, it's great for pneumonia. It's not the first remedy I use. I've written about pneumonia. Should you be concerned about pneumonia, you just ju uh, do this. Joet Calabrese pneumonia. And I give you the exact medicine, the potency, the frequency, and where to purchase it. It's also good for nephritis. Itis, of course, means inflammation of, and nef nephra means kidneys. So inflammation of the kidneys, which could mean an infection. Um, it's also good, believe it or not, for typhoid. Now, it's not something that we think about very often. Uh, typhoid has been long gone. And diphtheria. I know some people pronounce it dip. 
diphtheria, but I see it as D-I-P-H. So I make the P-H like an F sound, diphtheria. So it's D-I-P-H-T-H-E-R-I-A, diphtheria. Um, and we don't see diphtheria any longer. And no, it's not because we're vaccinated against it. Um, it's because it has had its virulency. It's come and it's gone just like most infectious um, uh, and contagious, I should say, most contagious infections come and then they go. And then they come and then they go. And some come every year, like coronas come every year. Um, flu, influenza comes every year. And others only come every half century um, and then show their, their, their um, um, ugly face every once in a while. But more often than not, if we are careful, and I'm just going off on a tangent here because I think it's important to do this. Um, if we um, are, are clean and we have sanitation um, where, the, where we actually have toilets now, where there was a time when these diseases uh, flourished because there was very little if no sanitation at all. Um, and now we know that we should uh, wash our hands, for example, when we're giving, when we're um, uh, uh, preparing food, that uh, the area should be clean when a woman is giving birth and it should not be um, hands that come from someone else um, in order to help deliver that baby. And all of that will, if, if we are careful and we eat properly and we get sunshine and we share meals with our families, and we do our prayer work, whatever prayer work that is to you, then that is what protects us. What harms us? Um, well, interestingly, Mercurius cyanatus or Mercurius sin is, um, is a, is a uh, um, product, it's mercury of sorts. Um, it's an aspect of mercury. And mercury was used by conventional medicine for about a hundred years and it was used for such conditions as teething, um, sore throats, um, any dental infections. Basically it was used the way antibiotics are used today. And so what it does is it causes problems such as um, sensitivity in the mouth, um, uh, fatigue that can be passed on through the generations. What I mean by that is there's kind of a, uh, what we'd call a miasm and in homeopathy and mayas, it means that whatever the condition was, uh, say, two generations ago, if it was suppressed with conventional drugs, that certainly would be mercurious, um, then it, it suppresses the, the condition, suppresses the symptoms, drives the, the disease to a deeper state, and then throws it down the bloodline. It is one of the basic tenets of homeopathy. It is the way we look at um, trying to understand how and when we use certain homeopathic medicines. So it's also interesting, it was used for syphilis. So um, also, but it's, so any kind of ulcer, pretty much, ulcers in the mouth, syphilitic ulcers, of course. Um, there can be an ulcer that's gray or an odd, not fleshy color. Um, salivary glands can be, a, can be a problem. They can be too, they can produce too much. Um, they can overproduce, they can underproduce, they can be painful. We can get a swelling of salivary glands that has to do with even salivary stones. Um, there can be a sense of suffocation when someone needs this medicine. Now look, this, there are many others. I'm just giving you the characteristics, the keynotes of this particular medicine. And what I also like about this medicine is that we often see great fatigue and hemorrhaging. So um, the fatigue, let me just go back to that. The fatigue can be rapid and intense and cause great prostration, meaning the person is just too fatigued to even move, um, hardly at all. Now, there are other medicines and there are others that I use and I teach in my classes, uh, but I also want you to know about this because this is a good one. The there's a lot of perspiration in this person. I'm not just talking about a little bit, but real great sweat. We have other medicines that we use for that first, but if there are any of these other keynotes that befit this picture, then I want you to consider this as well, a great sweat. And something else that's interesting about this medicine is that when they sleep, the, the pillow is often stained yellow. 
the pillowcase, the sheets. The perspiration is not just any old garden variety perspiration. It's perspiration often with a great odor as well as staining of the bedclothes. Um, speaking of odor, there can be um, halitosis, odor from the mouth um, that may or may not have something to do with the infection or tonsil stones, but it is a good one. Now we have other mercury medicines because mercury is such a wonderfully toxic substance that that's what we love most in homeopathy is to use our toxins. And then of course, for those of you who are new, um, what's what's lovely about toxins is when the medicine is is or when the the original substance is made into a medicine and diluted and diluted and diluted and in between each dilution there is succussion which is hitting and uh, and and then back to another dilution process and then hitting and then a dilution process until we have it say 200 times or 30 times to the hundredth power what it does is it brings down the the aspect of toxicity and brings for, forth the aspect of curative action. Is that not gorgeous? <laughs> Makes me happy to say it every time. <laughs> so uh, mercury sin is a medicine to think of for the likes of strep throat, my friends, and as I said, enlarged tonsils. If Hepar self does not act or is inappropriate, Mercurius soul or Mercurius sin might be what is called for in the past. It has been used for diphtheria, as I said, of the nose and throat. There can be ulcerations on the throat and pain and swallowing redness, severe cutting sensation in, at the site, as well as I can't read my own writing because I've written over it. I think I'm saying halitosis, destruction, or sepsis in the area, including the palate. I can't read this. I've written over it. <laughs> Um, I also want to say that mercur the mercurious remedies, the mercury remedies, soul, mercurious soul, mercurious vive, mercurious cyanatus, are, this is the area, here and here. It doesn't mean it can't be that in the axillary area that there's a lot of perspiration, but this is the general area right in this area, not too far off from where we've all had mercury embedded in our teeth over the last, what, 100 years of, um, of uh, misuse of, our, of, our, uh, um, of medicine. And I would call mercurius iotrogenic, meaning it has caused, mercury has caused so many diseases because people were using it so readily, but also it threw down, um, as I said, the, the, the miasm through the bloodline. Now, don't assume that just because your parents were given this when you were, when you were, uh, before you were born or that you took it or you had mercury in your teeth, don't make that assumption because to be honest, we can do that with everything or anything. You don't want to think, well, you know, they spray DDT, so it must be that I have a DDT poisoning because I just read about that. Or I had x-rays before I was born, and now it must be x-ray poisoning. Or, or, or. And so the reason that I put together my course called Toxins, or Toxic, I should say, um, is because I feel as though we've gotten to a place today in, in putting way too much emphasis on toxins and and, and how toxic our bodies are, how toxic the earth is, et cetera. And I want you to get away from that. And what will help you get away from that is homeopathy. Because then we get those big, bad, ugly toxins and use them and, have, and they're made into medicines. And now we see the value of having these toxins on earth. Now we see that it's not really as much that we surmise that it could have been a toxin from five years ago, 10 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, but rather let's look at the symptoms. Do we have swollen lymph nodes? Do we have tonsils that have that are superated? Do we have strep throat? Do we have pneumonia? Do we have a throat infection? I'm just going to go, do we have rapid prostration? Do we have hemorrhages, et cetera? That's when, how we choose these medicines. And what that does by looking at it in terms of symptoms and the name of the condition, strep throat, for example, um, is it, it allows us to put that thinking of toxicity. We are in a toxic world. I'm toxic, you're toxic, we're all toxic. Put that aside and it allows you not to even have to think about it. 
And instead, what you're thinking about is what is the name of the condition unless you don't know what it is. But let's say you know it's strep throat. Beautiful. Strep throat. And if there is um, this, this halitosis, and I might also add, I didn't, I don't think I said this, there's often a lot of uh, saliva, excessive saliva. And so there's drooling, could be drooling while the person's awake, but there can also be drooling when the person is um, sleeping. So we're not, not an occasional drooling, but if there's a good amount of drooling, then we want to consider this medicine as well. So instead of looking at, oh my gosh, it must be all those mercury, all that mercury filling, all these, those mercury fillings, listen folks, other than your children that you're not allowing them to have, so that you're, that the, you're not allowing to have mercury fillings put in their teeth. Do you know anyone who's not had mercury fillings put in their teeth? <laughs> really, all of us. Do you know anyone who's not had antibiotics and in abundance? We've all had them. Do you know any women who have not taken the pill? Very few, those wise ones. Um, do you know anyone, we could keep going, who's never had steroids or never had a, um, um, uh, a uh, an analgesic, has never had, we could keep going, uh, excessive x-rays, we've all done it. So because the fact that we are all here means that that's a good sign, right? It means that we can get past this and we can get past this beautifully. How? With the right thinking, upward thinking, lofty thinking, um, homeopathy, good food, um, good, good, staying close to your family, staying close to friends. That's the way we, we get rid of these kinds of conditions. So I haven't seen this yet, but my guess is you're going to be asking what potency do we use this Mercurius cyanatus? And I would use this in a 30th potency, 30C. If all you've got is 30X, that's fine. Use what you've got to, you can get what you need. So I would start with 30C for an acute situation and perhaps a 200C if it's more chronic. So an infection, those infections, um, pneumonia, et cetera, that's when I would use it in a 30. If, and it may be also for a hemorrhage. But if someone has chronic mouth ulcers um, and chronic swelling of the salivary glands, or et cetera, et cetera, some of the other things I've talked about in the past tonight. That and they are they're they've been around for a while. Chronic means you know over a period of many weeks, months, maybe years, even decades. Then I would use it in a 200 potency. And how frequently would I use it? If it's an acute situation, acute infections right now, I would use it every you know I would use it maybe every six to 12 hours. If it's something that's chronic, then I would use it in a 200 potency and use it perhaps once a day, once every other day. Now, sometimes I use it differently than that, but in general, without knowing what the condition is exactly that we're discussing, then I'm going to be a little bit more conservative in its use and say every, about every other day. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see what we've got here. All righty. Mystery illness in India. People are so afraid. Epileptic type seizures, vomiting, no virus found. Thankful for homeopathic medicine that we can administer based on symptoms and do not need to be fearful. Yes. If anything, if what if homeopathy does anything for you folks, for those of you who've been around and been using this while, you know that it does one very, very important thing. It erases fear. I don't have fear. That doesn't mean that I would never have fear, but I have no fear of the virus that's going around. I just don't even give it a thought. My husband and I had it earlier in the year, but even if I had not had it, every year people get sick from flu and those kinds of conditions. I just don't worry about it. So uh, let's see what else we've got. Thank you. Very nice. Common sense looks like joy. Sure, our materia medica is simple and easy. Thank you for saying mystery illness. We got that. Uh, replying to Beth, um, Herb Farm is everywhere. You can find it easily. Don't don't worry about it. Mercurius has got the spelling there. Okay, what else do we have? I would love to have you go over C again. Oh, starting to come back right now. Go back if you go back to my um, uh, my Facebook lives back in. Um, uh, Fe March, February, March, I talked about it. And, and Thuya was one of them that, that helped prevent. But I have to tell you that um, I found that people were using Thuya too long and we were getting, because who would ever expected that this was, was going to last this long? 
So um, I like, Eupatorium is an excellent medicine, folks. Excellent medicine for this condition, uh, this C condition. Um, Eupatorium is good um, in 200 potency is what I would use. Also, it's good in a, um, um, in, even in a tincture, in a mother tincture. Okay, let's see. How does it compare to the other mercurius remedies? How is Merxin distinguishable? Um, good question. I, I, I want to do that next week because next week we're going to go to the next mercurius. Next week's going to be mercurius soul or mercurius vive. Uh, I'm not sure. Did I separate them as mercurius soul and vive? Okay, uh, well, next week we'll be talking about that one. And then I'll be comparing. All righty. Um, Let's see. Is it helpful for teeth as well? Asking for my dog. Yes, it can be helpful, but it depends on what someone means by teeth. Uh, teeth that are breaking. Mm, I don't know that I would jump on that right away. Good evening from North Florida. Um, glad you're giving me, us this information. You bet. I love doing it. Let's see. Thought you may want to check out one of Joe's videos. Okay. Can't wait to learn more together. Yes. Learn together, folks. Listen, I can't urge you enough to learn together. It is very valuable for you to study together. Consider joining my mighty members. You can do that by just going to my, for my front page of my uh, website. Consider joining a study group. Both are very inexpensive. I, I set it up that way um, purposely. If you don't want to spend a plum nickel, I don't blame you in the least. Just study my blog. All my blogs, my Facebook lives, and my podcasts are free. And I've been um, presenting them for over 12 years every single week. And there are there's a lot of information. Okay, what about typhoid as a child? Asks April, would there be issues presenting that might be helped by mercurial cyanosis, or if the miasms, pillow stained yellow of children or someone that had typhoid as a child, child does not have throat ulcerations, infections, no mercury, no fillings. Here's the way I look at this. When you are sick, take medicine. When you are not sick, don't take medicine. Use that as your basis. I'm not saying that there's never any time in which we wouldn't use a homeopathic prophylactically or for another reason. But generally speaking, and I'm going to say it's a good, well into the 90th percentile, even past that, use the medicine if there's a reason to use it. If the child is sick, treat the child. If the child is not sick, be happy that nothing came of it and just be just be grateful and and I know, see, the, the problem with homeopathy is that most people come to it with having been um, following naturopathy, functional medicine, uh, herbalism, um, which I think is fabulous, by the way, chiropractic, I also have a hold in very high regard, um, but also vitamins and supplements. And with vitamins and supplements, the thought is, well, you 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 have this, or you you could use a little extra vitamin D, or you know it's cold season coming up, so just take this. That's not my philosophy generally. My philosophy is to treat the illness. There are those exceptions, but they're pretty rare. They're pretty rare. Yep. Okay. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, can you please tell me approximately how long it takes to get certifications for completion of a course once you've submitted the form? Just check with my office. They'll tell you right there. We've got wonderful people at the office who can help you with that information. Okay. All righty. Let's see what we've got. That was Mighty's. Now let's see what we've got here. All right. I think we're way down at the bottom here now. Herb farmers everywhere. I saw that before. Materia Medica, I had a little mercury filling put in and it was completely unnecessary. The hygienist wanted to. In, all right, let me just tell you something really interesting. I think this is interesting and I want you to think about this. I want you to learn how to flex your no muscles. No, thanks. No, I don't need that x-ray today. Wow, look at this goofy hair. I don't need that x-ray today. Thanks, Doc. I'll think about it. Your child's in the hospital, it's an emergency. Thanks, doc, gotta check with my husband. No, you're great, doc, thank you so much. You can't undo many medical interventions. You can't undo drugs. You can't undo superfluous x-rays. You can't undo 
um, su superfluous surgery. Again, I'm not saying you never use these, these methods, but <sighs> stop, think, and learn how to flex your no muscle. No thanks, Doc. Does it matter if it's, is it a life and death situation? Okay, if it's life and death and they're gonna die and they need to have this plasma, okay, I get it, got it, okay. But if this is, oh, the child is sick or I, my husband's sick and you've got, you know you've got some wiggle room, don't ask the doctor unless you, you really trust or know this doctor, but don't just ask any doctor willy nilly, how much wiggle room do we have? Because they know that they're gonna lose you and they don't wanna lose you. They want you to move along in their methods. It's not, again, because they're scoundrels. It's because this is what they do. And if this is not what you want, then you must learn how to nicely, politely say, no thanks, go home, get online, research like crazy, talk to your husband about it, talk to your friends. If you're a member of Mighty Member, that's where you learn from each other. You're part of our study groups, you're part of our classes, that's how you learn from each other. And then do your research. And then you then you make the call. Hey, Doc, yeah, I'm interested in that. You make the decision after the suggestion has been made. Remember that if you have your mind, your head, your brain filled up with the way you know how to think, there'll be no room for a little slice of somebody to come in there and fill it in. Because I guarantee if you've got an opening and you're thinking, I guarantee someone will be in there to fill it in. That's the way humans are. They fill in your blanks. Don't leave anything blank. Don't leave anything blank. If you don't know, become knowledgeable. You can always find the answer. There's always, now this is my motto, there's always another way. There's always another way. There's always another way. And if you see everybody going that way, rethink it and consider going this way, or at least remaining neutral enough that you can watch as many people jump off the, the cliff. Let others go that way if they need to. That's their path. You hold tight. You hold to your gut feeling. This doesn't feel right. I'm being pushed too fast. This is going too quickly. This is not what I had in mind. That's when you say, okay, flex your no muscle and learn how to say no in a nice way. And I think I'm going to ask you, please share, please get this out there, folks. We want homeopathy to live. And because if it lives, then you may, it makes it easier for you and your loved ones. Um, okay. Let's see, that's great. Yes, thank you. I agree, we've had homeopathy since 1984. I trusted and just had COVID and managed it with homeopathy and it helped to keep it as close to, to, um, to scold as I can tell, except for the time without my normal taste or smell. Yeah, that seems to be what, what remains. My whole family had it. We all got past it. I worked right. My husband and I were, we were uncomfortable for a couple of days till I figured out what it was and what we needed to do. We started using the medicines. As long as we took them, we were fine. We were able to work. Once we stopped taking the medicines, it came back again. Then we took the medicines again. Okay, yes, Eupatorium. And I bought that little sucker in a plant for my garden. <laughs> Common name is Joe Pieweed. You're absolutely right. Um, okay. I used to have Joe Pieweed. I used to uh, gather it myself. All right, could you recap? I won't recap the remedies for pneumonia, just do this. I mean, I was telling, tonight I was talking about Mercurius Sin, but just go to my blog or go, just do this. Joe at Calabrese pneumonia, Joe at Calabrese asthma, Joe at Calabrese eczema, Joe at Calabrese irritable bowel syndrome, Joe at Cal just do that. I give it to you for free. Um, yeah, and my homeopath taught me that vitamins push your body to behave. Oh, what a great word. That's a great word. It's a verb. To, yeah. And hinder manifestations of symptoms needed to identify for remedies. I always consider that. Yeah. I think vitamins are also can be suppressive. I have many people who suffer from uh, uh, vitaminitis. I don't know if that's a real word, but if it is, it's a good one. 
All right, mighties. <laughs> See you next week. We'll go over Mer the next Mercurius uh, next Monday. And God bless all of you. Mwah! Pass along the information. Good night. See you next Monday. Bye. <laughs>